So friends, during the midst of videoing with Billy Stanley, and of course, you know that I filmed with uh, other family members, uh, Billy Smith, Danny Smith, people on that side. Um, but something hit me um, while I was editing these things. And I actually had a conversation with Ashley Drew about it. And something that has struck me is I read about Elvis. I read about the Stanley brothers. I read about all these different people. And it's almost like they were not real people. It was almost like I watched a movie and these people were all characters in a movie. And this next uh, set of clips from uh, Billy where we filmed, it dawned on me that these were real people, real feelings. These guys grew up with Elvis. He was like their father. You've got to consider Elvis had been really famous for about four years when these uh, boys came into the picture and the stepmother D and Elvis accepted them just like family. They grew up with him. They spent time with him. They even uh, eventually worked for him. So the next time you want to say something negative about these people, they loved Elvis. How could they not? They were children. When they met Elvis, they were children. They grew up with him. And it was devastating to them when he passed away. And I want you to really listen to uh, Billy's voice and the way he tells the story later in this video about that fateful day. And I want you to consider what if it was you and this was one of your family members that you loved dearly and they passed away and the people that you thought loved your family member suddenly turned against you for things you didn't even do. They blamed you for things other people did and that kind of stuff. So consider that when you're watching this video. So friends, the main thing I'm trying to say here is you don't know what's going on in other people's lives. When you look around, you think you're the only one that's got problems. Try a little kindness. You don't know what people have gone through. You don't know what's gone on with their day, with their year, with their life, whatever. Just be kind. It's not that hard, I promise. And others will be kind to you. Do you want me to show you where that hamburger place was where he threw that drunk out? Yeah. Okay. Tell us that story. Oh, well, let's get over to it first. Okay. Uh, that's one that I shared on Facebook about. We were coming back from the Circle G Ranch, and he was, let's get stop and get a burger. Yeah, I, I read said, that. Hey, I remember reading it. You mean, yeah. get him to go? No, we're going inside. Okay. Which was kind of rare. He didn't really do that a whole lot, so. And when Elvis died, see, I worked right across, right across from the this airport right here, there used to be a place over across there called Bailey Aircraft. That's mm -hmm. where I was working when I was died. You're saying after he passed away? But no, when the day he passed away, I got off work early that day because I knew they were going to leave, and I'd already asked my boss. Oh, so you said, had yeah. already gone and gotten a, a job, job, a mechanic job, because that's what you wanted to do. Yeah. So you worked on airplanes for a living. Yeah. How long had you been doing that before he passed? year and a half okay so that was fairly new to you but that was what mm -hmm. you wanted to do that was your your jam yeah you like working on stuff it, well the whole traveling thing with me just i just didn't sit right with me i mean i just i was a homebody i, I like just being it because i guess i remember too much of it when i was growing up between the age of one and seven growing up and never really having any friends because you know after we I'd make a couple of friends, then we'd be moving because my dad was in the service. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I, I just didn't care for it. I mean, everybody sees the glitz and glamour. All they see is the stage. They don't see all the hard work that goes in. A whole lot of, uh, before that happened. Yeah, right? a whole lot. And then after too, because sometimes you fly out that night. Uh, sometimes you spend the night. It's great when you spend the night. And then... <clears throat> then you're back on the plane again. So you had gone and gotten a mechanic job. What were you doing? Just working on airplanes, maintenance? Uh, I was working for a company. We did conversions on King Airs and uh, 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 Swearingers. Uh, what they would what they would do is they, they were turboprop engines. And what the, when I mean conversion, what they do is 
they would come in and from the factory they'd have a Pratt and Whitney dash PT dash six, and we'd t- convert them over to a, a PT dash twenty or twenty eight, and so that was our jobs. So we was just re- basically doing engine swaps, uh, upgrades. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So I got good enough within that year and a half uh, that I was. They usually had two people working on one side. I was doing one side by myself, and the two senior mechanics would be over on the other side. And it was always funny because the pilots, when you get finished, especially on a private plane, they always get the mechanics to take a ride with them. It's called a test hop. <laughs> and I'm sitting in that plane going, man, I hope I remember to do this and do that. <laughs> I'm going, wow. But I love the job. It, I mean, if I'd have stuck with it a little bit longer, I would have been, you know, an air, aircraft inspector instead of a mechanic. But How I long guess, did you do that? Uh, I quit shortly about six months after Elvis passed away I was I was a, an emotional wreck after that I mean when Elvis died I just even though I wasn't working for him it was that was my brother I mean yeah. it devastated me well so, it, it devastated pretty much everybody you know in the in the family and in, in the entourage I feel like yeah well I, I crawled in a bottle and didn't come out of it until 1987 when I put myself into a drug rehab Man, I'm sorry. I know that was tough stuff. Well, my, it was funny because my psychologist was in there said, when I was leaving, he said, Billy, I'm going to give you something before you leave. And I went, okay, what's this? So my last day I went in, and he said, okay, are you ready for your gift? And I said, sure, what is it? He said, I'm giving you back your identity. I said, what do you mean? I know who I am. He said, no. Every time you've ever, every time you've always been introduced, that people say this is Elvis's brother. From now on, you say no, Elvis was my brother because he's no longer here. That's and that's why the name of the book, Elvis, my brother. So where can they get those books? Amazon, I guess. So I don't still, know. It is on Amazon. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, if it's not, we need to make sure it is. Well, it was one of my steps. You know, when you come, you know, like AA, or, uh, mine was pretty much CA because I was doing a lot of coke at the time. And uh, I wanted to quit. So one of the steps in the 12 step program is come clean with about your life. Yeah. And that's what I did. So, kind of put it all out there. Yeah. Good, bad, and indifferent, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, you know, at least now, all that, that chapter. Well, man, you seem fantastic so I, I'm very thankful that thank you that you pulled through that well a lot of people don't you know and I mean yeah, plus I had a little incentive I had a daughter you know I wanted to make sure because when I was growing up I really the only father figure I really had was Elvis I mean Vernon was my stepfather yeah and I didn't really get to know my real dad so Elvis was the father figure the alpha male in my family mm-hmm. so and I always said when I grew up I mean when I was growing up, if I ever have any kids, that I want to make sure my my kids know who their dad is. Mm-hmm. I was going to be definitely a big part of their life, and that's one thing. My daughter, in fact, she uh, lived with me because me and her mom got a divorce, and I got custody of her, and because I wanted to make sure she knows who her daddy was. So proud of you, man. <laughs> Thanks. So, and I hate to hearken you back to a, to a bad day, but tell us about that day that you got off work and what happened. Well, yeah, I mean, after this, I can show you what I, I was, because I left there and I'll show you the store I stopped at and where I heard it. And... Okay. So you didn't hear it from family? No, I was in a store. A friend of mine used to live over here in the Stovalls. Mm-hmm. And in fact, his, uh, his dad is the one that built one of the planes for Elvis. Those remote control oh, planes. Oh, really? He, he built a sailboat in his backyard. <laughs> hmm. Right here on this corner right here. You can see the mast was taller than, I mean. Which house? That, that one? That one right there on the corner. Yeah. And the mast, I'm going, well, he can't sell that thing. You know, what's he going to do with it? His, his son kept saying, I don't know. He and just, what was this guy's name, Noah? Stova. Sto- yeah, <laughs> Stovall. <laughs> But a, a real good friend of mine that's a huge Elvis fan, by the way, Bill Stovall. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, that I went to high school with, and we're still friends. Yeah. He had that sailboat back there in the backyard, and I went, 
it, it was a joke, you know. I mean, I was just going, what's he going to do? Save it, yeah, save it for a rainy day. <laughs> yeah. But he eventually came out with it. Yeah, he sold it to somebody. He never sailed on it. It's, but he built it. Yeah, he built the whole thing right there in his yard. Wow, so he was a craftsman then. Oh, yeah, he was a very smart man. Yeah, I see where we're at, where yeah. at now. That's Graceland Elementary right Graceland there. Graceland Elementary, yeah. So did you ever come here when they were playing football? Yeah, I went to school there. Oh, did you? This is a, oh, we got to do this. All right. So this was your elementary school. Right. And it was called Graceland Elementary even Grace, then. Graceland Elementary. I even played football for them. Elvis would come and watch his play, and he'd film it. Really? Yeah. So there's and footage the, of you playing football somewhere. The estate has it. Yep. And he, he'd come out here and watch David. David was playing YMCA football and filmed it right here. But right here, right here was the entrance to the school. Okay. One day I came out. And there was a bunch of people just standing around the car. I did, kids and, you know, everybody was around. The, it was the pink Cadillac. Because that's the car I was told to come to, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is when I just started coming to school. I walk out and see this big crowd. And as I got to it, you know, they kind of moved out of the way so I could get in. I saw it was Elvis. He was sitting here signing autographs. And I get in the car and he said, how was your day at school? I said, it's okay. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm signing autographs. I said, what's that? And he said, that's where you put your name on a piece of paper. And he said, would any of you girls like to have my little brother's autograph? And they all squealed, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I reached in my book bag and I pulled out a red crown and somebody hands me a piece of paper. I just, like, I'm still learning how to write. I'm <laughs> yeah. Billy on there and I just, here you go. And it, we did this for a few minutes and I'm going, what is this? That is and, great. And he said, uh, well, I got to go, he said, but uh, my little brother's new here. He said, would some of you older kids kind of keep an eye on him, make sure, you know, he gets around okay and nobody bothers him and stuff? And they said, yeah. And a couple of girls said, if you ever need a babysitter, let us know. And he said, I'll do it. I promise you. And they uh, they all squealed, you know, and he said, <laughs> we'll see y'all later. And we pull off. So as we're driving down through here, I, that's when I'm going, are you famous or something? And he said, well, he like, kind of laughs. He said, well, some people think I am. And I didn't know what to equate it to. I said, are you more famous than Mickey Mouse? <laughs> he could laugh again. He said, well, some people think I am. He said, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna get, I'll get Daddy to show you some of my movies and play some of my records for you. I said, well, that'd be neat. And that was it. Well, I think the reason my mom finally moved was because uh, Vernon had Sandy move over here with her and her kids. And that's where he... Him and uh, Sandy lived. Okay. So there's Linda's house up here on the right. Mm -hmm. That one right there. So that house is 1293. So he lived here with Sandy Miller and her kids. Mm -hmm. For how long would you estimate? Uh, year or so, maybe okay. a year and a half, two. And then Linda's house is further down. Uh-huh. Okay. But see, that was just a little bit too close for my mom because, you know, she would go to the, get her hair done and stuff like that. And all the women would be going, well, we heard about, you know, yeah. learning, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that just, she couldn't handle that. So, I mean, she got a house over on Bonnie Drive. So. so she sold the other house back to Vernon, more or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then she moved over to Bonnie. Yeah. Okay. Where we was just we was just over on Bonnie, drove past it. Here's the store I stopped at. Feeling safe. Yeah, it was a 7-Eleven. It was 7-Eleven. It looks like a 7-Eleven. Uh-huh. 1341 Winchester. Okay. I went in the store to get me a Coke. I was headed to Graceland. As, you know, it's just down the street from the airport. I went in there, and I knew the clerk, because he, he, hey, Billy, I mean, I'd, know, I'd known him because I'd been in the store a few times, and we just did some small talk, and, hey, Billy, how's the car running? I said, running great, you know. I went back and got a Coke, and when I came back and got was paying for the Coke, that's when it was announced on the radio. He had a radio playing. 
I just went, I froze. I just, you know, next thing I know, he's shaking me. Billy, 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 come on. He said, you need to call Grayson. And there was a phone booth right there on the corner. So I walked out. I was going to walk to my car. And I saw the phone booth. And I said, yeah. So I walked over to the phone booth. I kind of fumbled around with some change. And I put a quarter in. I called. I said, this is Billy. And I can't. I couldn't tell whose voice it was because they were crying. It was, a, it was a female voice. I said, this is Billy. Is it true what I heard on the radio? And they said, yes, it is. You need to get up here as fast as you can. I said, okay. I tried to hang the phone up, and I just, it, it fell. And I walked over to my car, and I was reaching for the door. And I, for, I just, I fell to my knees and looked straight up and said, why, God, why? You know, and I was going, why weren't you there, Billy? You know, all this stuff was, you know, what happened? I didn't know. So I sat in my car and I cried for a few minutes. And I started it up and then that's when I, I drove toward Graceland, which we'll do. What car were you in? Uh, I had a 66, I mean a 67 Chevelle at that time. Thank you.